Hey everybody, welcome back to our interview series. My name is Dr. Sean from Vitality Chiropractic. In this series, we'll be talking with people about their stories, the people they work with, and of course, uh, some of the other uh, aspects of their businesses. Today, my guest is Keith Wasson from the USA. He's here in Florida. Uh, Keith is a nationally known author and speaker in health education and research. He's also a former weightlifting champion, turned chiropractic advocate after being diagnosed with a near fatal health condition. His recovery led him to research, writing, and lecturing about the scientific principles of chiropractic. Keith, how are things going in Florida? Fantastic. Good morning and good evening, since we're so many hours apart, but uh, just, just doing well. So for those people who've never been to a chiropractor before, how would you explain chiropractic to them? Well, first of all, I'd want, I'd want them to know, are they interested in hearing about chiropractic? I would engage them. And so I wouldn't just start spouting off saying this, you know, blah, blah, blah. We'd, we'd have a conversation. I'd ask them about their life, their lifestyle, what they enjoy. Uh, I want to know if they, if they have something worth protecting. And uh, so we'd have that little engagement type thing. And then we shifted over to, to chiropractic. And I would do it by, this is how, how I do it, is I, I wouldn't give them a little, tell, this is what chiropractic is, I would have a conversation with them. And um, I might ask them, um, what, you know, once they bring up chiropractic, they're going to ask me, and, I, and there's a way to do that. I'm going to say, what, what do you think a chiropractor does? Or what's the purpose of the chiropractic adjustment? And I check their answer. And they're going to get something right. You know, they do something with their back, they crack their back, whatever. And what I do is I auto-correct them. I say, that's correct, they adjust their spine. Now, why would that be important? And so we're gonna have this conversation where I'm just asking questions and they're supplying the answers. They, they know all the pieces of the story, kind of like a, a, an unassembled jigsaw puzzle piece. They, they know the pieces, but they haven't put them together. And rather than me telling them, I'm going to lead them down a path of self-discovery, put, put it together, put it together, and at the end, they're gonna go, oh, so that's what, and then they're gonna understand it that it's, it's far more than simply a back therapy type thing. It's all about neurological function. It's all about uh, optimizing the inherent healing capability of the body. And again, when we get done with this, and it, this takes two, three minutes, um, then what's next? More information, uh, can, can I send you to someone? Here's the next step. And if I've done my job correctly, I don't even need to say, here's what you need to do. There's, well, Keith, what's next? Who do you recommend? How do you find a good chiropractor? And so it's, it's, it's really a question answer thing where they're doing 80-90% of the talking, which means it's more powerful than if I just threw a bunch of stuff at them. Absolutely. I mean, if you can get people to be engaged in anything, it's going to be much more beneficial. I, I, engagement always precedes information, always. And I think too many times we, the profession, doctors, want to start right with the information, no matter how fantastic it is. And if you haven't got them in that, in that realm of curiosity, engagement, yeah, right over the head. And I've heard from quite a few other people as well, kind of if whatever anyone asks you, whether it's about chiropractic, anything healthcare, even things in your personal life, it's just, why do you ask? Let mm -hmm. them kind of lead the, the way for it. Sure, sure. So for yourself, I know you have an interesting story. Would you mind sharing with us how you got into chiropractic? Sure. Um, gosh, 35 plus years ago, I was um, in the Navy, uh, submarine service, United States. I was stationed in Charleston, South Carolina, and um, was also at the time the Navy and Armed Forces weightlifting champion. Um, that, that really was my job to train, to tour, to compete, to do exhibitions, and it was, it was a good life. It, it really was, and there was many times I thought, I, I can't believe the government's paying me to lift weights. It's a dream come true. And they actually paid me more because of per diem and things like that, but I came back from California, um, this would have been middle 80s, and I was, I was, in, I was in peak shape. I at one time held all the national records drug-free. Uh, I was on magazines. I was on TV. I was uh, locally, you know, like a, like a minor celebrity in Charleston. Everywhere I went, people knew who I was. And I, and I came back, and I started developing some sinus headaches. Not a big deal. They just were more annoying than anything else. So I go down to the, the Navy dispensary, the, the little hospital unit, and they gave me two drugs for that cleared right up. No, no sinus headaches. Wow, great. And, uh, but I woke up the following morning with really, really bad diarrhea, like nuclear diarrhea. I go back to see the, the Dr. Corman and they said, yeah, that's an unexpected, that's, that's a, 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 an expected side effect of medication. Let me give you something for that. So they gave me another drug and that cleared up the diarrhea, but now it made, uh, it gave me ringing in my ears. Well, that was the side effect of the diarrhea medication. Well, this just kept going. Every couple of days I'm back there for another drug, another drug, Inside of about two weeks, I'm taking 18 different kinds of drugs, about 70 pills in a 24-hour period. Now, you combine the toxicity of that 
along with 20 plus years of accumulated uncorrected neurological stress in my spine. I grew up on a farm and did all the dumb stuff and wrestled and rodeoed and jumped off barns and fist fought and all these fun things. And it sent me to a tailspin and my health quickly spiraled downhill to where I ended up in the ER of the, the Navy hospital. And I, I had collapsed at home and my roommates rushed me to the, the hospital. Spent the next eight days or so just being poked and prodded. They injected uh, something in the back of my neck. Uh, within days, my hair fell out and I lost 80, 90% of the hearing in this ear, neither of which have, have come back, as you can see. And um, I became a, uh, a walking invalid, basically. I lost 40, 50 pounds of, of pretty much muscle. Uh, my skin turned uh, you know, gray. And again, this wasn't overnight, but over, over, over a, m a month or two, I couldn't eat anything other than applesauce. Uh, I would try to eat other foods and it was just projectile vomiting. I hope people aren't watching this while they're, they're eating lunch or anything like that because it can be really disgusting. And I just continued to be poked and prodded and, and given more medication. At one point in time, I lost track of how many meds I was on. And I spent the next 14 months in that, in that condition. Uh, I couldn't sleep. Um, I, and I had access to the best doctors in this country. I, I saw our President Reagan, uh, personal physician back in the 80s at the Bethesda Hospital. Good people, good, well-intentional people who met well. Uh, I, I remember sitting around with, with my medical team because I would meet with them once a month and, and there was tears in their eyes. I mean, they, they were not bad people. They just were headed down a, a, a wrong path. And um, I spent uh, all the last three, four, five months of this, I would sleep at night in my, in my bathroom with a nest of pillows and blankets against the toilet because they give me a new medication that gave me dry heaves and I couldn't make it from my bedroom to the bathroom, which was right next door to each other. I would just lay there and on a, on a bad night, the, the vomiting, the, the, the heaves, so to speak, on a, on, a, on a good night, they were 10 or 15 minutes apart for eight hours. On a bad night, they were five to seven minutes apart. Now doc, I don't know if you've ever had like food poisoning or anything like that. When you're relatively healthy and fit, dry heaves are no picnic when you're when you're decimated with with illness oh my gosh and there there, there was many many nights I, I thought of ending it i said i can't live like this i went from being this this guy who lived 700 pounds a year ago to now i didn't have the energy to walk out to my mailbox and get the mail my i had a, a elderly neighbor lady who's actually disabled who would go out and get my mail for me and i had people taking care of me and it was just the fatigue the the fatigue of pain Imagine you've gone, what's the longest you've ever gone without sleep? Maybe a couple of days or long flight where you're just exhausted. But that exhaustion just, just it, it's painful. It's just that dull pain. And that's, that's, that's what I was like. I met with my medical team uh, about 15 months into this. And they said, Keith, we suggest you get your affairs in order. Um, we've done everything we can. Your immune system's failing. Um, I, we're sorry. You got, you got maybe four or five months, but you won't see Christmas. And this would have been like about this time of the year. And I was relieved to hear that, Doc. I, I was ready to go. I, I was no life. I was living. Um, it's actually that period of time. It's it's just it's like a dream. I don't remember stuff. Movies, I, you know, I, I don't remember football games. I, I just I don't. It's all fog. And so I wasn't married. I didn't have kids at the time. Had a friend drive me to a shopping center uh, to buy Christmas gifts for my family, knowing I wasn't going to be alive. And I spent the entire day buying gifts. And I only had like four or five to buy, but I'd, I'd go into a store and I'd find something. I'd go out in the food court and I'd sit down for an hour and uh, have some water or lemonade or something. And then I'd go back and do it again. And um, finally, in the last, the last store was a, a bookstore. And I wanted to buy my mom a, a couple of books. And as I'm, as I'm paying for them, and I walked like, a, like, a, like an old man. I shuffled. Uh, my balance was off because of the medication. Guy comes up to me and he says, are, are you okay? Are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. I'm fine. And he just keeps bugging me. And I, and I just, I ignored him. And I went out to the food court to sit down and wait for my friend to come pick me up. And he followed me. And, you know, I was well known in Charleston. So people would see me. They'd see my condition. Keith, what happened? And honestly, you get tired of telling your story, especially after shopping all day, which was fatiguing. Anyway, I, I ended up telling him my story. I was waiting. And he said, you should come see me, I'm, I'm a doctor. My office is right across the street. He was, he was at the mall hunting patients, he was a chiropractor. And when he told me he was a chiropractor, I, I laughed at him, you know? Probably had the first good laugh. I said, you, you didn't listen to me, I'm, I'm not injured. There's nothing wrong with my neck or back. Uh, I have, my immune system's failing. He says, Keith, there's a lot more to chiropractic than you think. And I said, I know I don't look it, but I'm, I'm something of a health expert, pretty arrogant statement. I said, I've written for muscle and fitness. I've 
I've done seminars and lectures. I'm, I'm well known. I've, I've been on the Tonight Show. Uh, if there was more to chiropractic, I would know about it. Side note, my, I, my dad was a real negative toward chiropractic, so I kind of inherited that. And I finally agreed to come see him just to get rid of him. I lied to him. I had no intention of it. And as we were having this conversation, he's giving me his card. My, my friend showed up to give me a ride home. And as we're, right, as we're driving home, my, my friend Bruce says, um, you want me to take you to that guy tomorrow? So I'm not going to see him. He goes, you told him where I said to get rid of him. And he says, uh, well, why don't you go? And I says, because chiropractic is quackery, you know, according to my dad. I said, do you, do you know anything about him? He goes, nothing really good, to be honest with you. But if it was me, Keith, and I was dying like you are, what wouldn't you do? I, 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 what else are you doing tomorrow besides throwing up in your bucket, which I, I carried a red bucket with me around the house. I said, okay. So he takes me the next day and this guy examines me and he x-rays me and he's talking and he adjusts me and he made me rest. And uh, I felt no different. In fact, I was, I was worn out just from the whole appointment. And then he, he hugged me, which I thought was really weird, but I didn't have the energy to fight it off. And he goes, I'll see you tomorrow. And uh, I go home and felt no different. In fact, I was annoyed at the whole process. And I, I was living on applesauce. I, I could eat two or three cans of applesauce and that was it. That's, applesauce is banned in our home, by the way, now. But um, I woke up the next day and I wasn't in pain, but I was stiff and sore from head to toe. Like you do a new workout the first time, you're not in pain, but you, you get that, that muscle stiffness. And I remember thinking, that's what these chiropractors do. They hurt you the first day and then the next day they fix it. Yeah, it was right, this is, this is all a scam. And I was mad. I, that's the last thing I needed. And I remember going in and taking a shower and brushing my teeth and getting dressed and going into the kitchen to get my little applesauce. And doc, it's, it's, been, it's been 34, 35 years. And it's like it was yesterday. I, I, I stood in the middle of the kitchen, dead in my tracks. And I thought, and two, three things hit my mind. I had just slept eight straight hours for the first time in a year and a half. I don't think I'd slept more than two or three hours total. And it wasn't good sleep. It was, it was a good, I was, for the first time, I was able to shower, brush my teeth and get dressed and not be wiped out. Normally I have to go sit on the couch or my, my chair for an hour just to recover, to have the energy to go to the kitchen and open up a, a, a can of applesauce. And I was legitimately hungry for the first time in a year. I had to force myself to eat. And I remember thinking, okay, eight straight hours of sleep. I actually feel refreshed and I'm hungry. Chiropractic. Huh. And I stood there for the longest time and I went, you know what, I, 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 I can't take applesauce. I'm gonna try something else. So I cooked two soft boiled eggs. I knew I was gonna throw them up, but I figured soft boiled eggs are easy on the stomach. And I tried to eat other things and it, 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 it was ugly. Ate the two soft boiled eggs, grabbed my bucket, sat in a chair waiting to throw up. And they were, they were delicious, I, I love eggs. Didn't throw up. Huh, you know, I believe I'll go back and see that guy again. I, I, I'm still not convinced, but you know what? Hmm. I kept seeing him and he kept adjusting and kept working on me. And, you know, it wasn't like the, the heavens parted, the hand of God came down and all of a sudden I'm just miraculously well, but every day got better. My ADLs, my activities of daily living got better and better and better. Energy is being restored. And again, I'm not in any kind of pain. Uh, all of a sudden I could walk out to the mailbox and walk back. I could eat a couple slices of tomatoes. I'm taking naps. I could actually sit and watch TV I think it was baseball season at the time, and, and, and actually be able to focus on it. Uh, I, I missed reading because I, I just couldn't, I couldn't stay focused because of the medication. I could actually read, read a book. Got better, got better, got better. Weight's coming back on. I graduated on my own, stopped taking the medication. Um, you know, pretty soon I'm taking a walk around the block. I remember I got to drive my truck for the first time in a year and a half. Um, within three weeks, uh, colors were turning to my skin. And I remember I'd put on about 15 or 20 pounds. I remember the first time I had spaghetti for the first time in a you know, year and a half. Not a lot, because my stomach was so you know, messed up from all that. Put my uniform on, showed up at the, the Navy office and said reporting for duty. They thought they were coming to my funeral. And uh, within six weeks, I'm training in the gym again, little tiny pink weights. You know, Within a year, I'm training and competing and, and, and smashing all my previous records. And I couldn't figure it out. And uh, I asked this guy to explain it to me. and he trained, did it gave the standard here's here, here's what chiropractic isn't it just didn't make any sense to me and i'm referring him people i'm referring him people left and right uh probably probably 40 or 50 people over the next six six to eight weeks um and i didn't even know why i just said, listen i know this this benefited me 
And being very curious, I started researching it. We didn't have Google back then. We had Microfish. And I, I'd go to the library and I'd search chiropractic. And I, 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 I kind of got the sense of subluxation, but not really. Couldn't find anything on it. And so I would, uh, I'd work until, I was still on light duty in the Navy. I get off work every day, uh, one o'clock, and I go down to the, the, the medical library in our town. And I'd spend, till closing, eight, 10 hours studying neurology, studying anatomy books, studying everything I could. And I just couldn't quite make the connection. And then he had some green books on his shelf, the chiropractor did. And I asked, asked him what they were, and he said, the chiropractic green books. And I said, what's in them? He goes, I don't know. And he, he just had them on there for a wall decor. He had like a bust of BJ on one side, and a bust of DD of bookends. I said, may I, may I borrow one? He says, yeah, okay. So I, I got up from below the bottom, probably not the best intro green book for a, a lay person. And I started reading it. And I'm, you don't really read green books, you read through them. You know, it's not like a novel. You, you read something, you sit and you think about it. Then you read a paragraph. And pretty soon, I'm reading more of the green books. And I remember having them spread over my table. I'd have green books on the left. And I'd have physiology books on the right, Arthur Guyton on the right. And finally, in, in the philosophy, I saw why. The consistency of like why the body works, why the body always works the way it does. You know, you take a, you take a jet aircraft and you take a little crop duster they're completely different machines but they operate under the same universal principles of aerodynamics and gravity and all that kind of stuff it's not like this plane has a different set of rules and so i saw the why the consistency of life the consistency of healing and in the physiology i saw the the how this is how it does this is how the why is manifested through the nervous system and intelligence is, is a very real thing and i eventually put them together where i understood the how and the why and i and i remember when it, when it hit me when it really hit me that the big idea. And I thought to myself, how, 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 how did I miss this? How did I grow up? How did I have a college degree? How do I have coaches, nationally ranked, world ranked coaches, and nobody's ever told me about subluxation? Nobody's ever put this together for me. And I really felt cheated. You know, what, what, why was my dad so dumb about this stuff? That he, he, he not only did he not know, he went the other way with it. And um, I had already been teaching and lecturing on the, in the strength circuit. And so I started teaching and lecturing. Uh, you know, I, they didn't invite me to do a, 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 a lecture and I would throw chiropractic in and I didn't do a really good job of it. And I eventually actually embarrassed myself. And so I started building the whole lecture process and teaching it. And I've, um, I've spent the last 34 years, basically that's what I do. And I have a day job, I have a day business, so to speak. But I've spent my life uh, teaching, lecturing, sharing, finding research, making it digestible for, for the average person. And I, at one time for the first 20 years, probably averaged about 300 public lay lectures a year um, all over the world. Um, I do lectures to chiropractors, CE type stuff, but it's not the focus. It's not the focus of what I do. It just kind of comes with the territory. And so here it is 35 years later, and it's, it's what I get up and it's what I'm passionate about. And I have thousands of lectures each year that are just one-on-one, one-on-two. -on -one, one -on we get the conversation started. We're ch chatting. Um, I, I remember going in. Uh, to a McDonald's one morning to get coffee. And I was sitting there, I start talking to this guy and chiropractic comes up because I, I make sure it comes up. And I'm talking to him, talking to him, well, someone else joins the conversation. Someone else joins the conversation. Then he leaves and someone else joins. And then three people sit down. I, I went in there about 8.30 in the morning and I left at 6 p.m. that night. And I probably talked to 200 people throughout. It, 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 and they just kept coming. And I, and I kept going, I gotta get out of here. I gotta get out of here. I gotta get out of here. And it's just, it's what I do. So you mentioned, of course, about some of the talks, and to be honest, even the talks that you do, actually, it's part of how I base some of my talks when I go to, say, um, members of the community or we go to businesses as well. What mm -hmm. other kind of services or ways do you work with chiropractors at the moment? Um, probably two things. I, I don't coach. I at least don't coach for hire. You can't, you can't hire me to, to teach you this stuff. But anybody who wants to get on the phone with me and, and, and talk a little bit about communication, I do it. And I, and I do that all day long. Um, when I started teaching back in the 80s, and I would come up, and I, and I was talking about immune system and chiropractic long before it was even, it was even put together. Um, but people say, where are you getting information at? Where, 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 what's that study? What's that? And I'd go, oh, I'll, I'll, send it to you. I'll send you a copy. Well, can I get a copy? Can I get a copy? So pretty soon I'm sending out thousands of pieces every month of this literature and it got pretty expensive and, and time consuming. So I started compiling the research into packets, you know, just have the overview overview. And I would, I would hand this out uh, upon request. 
And pretty soon I start illustrating it, um, you know, doing little clip art and putting spines in and things like that. And I pretty soon I had, I don't know, six or eight different packages just showing the, the research that was incredible. And this research, by the way, in my, in my first chiropractic office, I didn't see any of this. It was all neck pain, back pain, sciatica, lumbago, you know. And um, next thing you know, I'm getting calls from all over the country and the world really uh, from chiropractic offices saying, hey, a, a new patient of mine brought in this packet that he got from you or got from a friend. We love this stuff. Can, can we buy this from you? I said, no, no, I'll send it to you. I'll send it to you. Well, eventually it got to where I was getting so many calls that I went, okay, I'll sell it to you. And you know, I'll sell you one copy and you use it as much as you want. And it turned into a way to fund my work, to fund what I do in the public, to fund the lectures and things like that. And so I just kept adding, adding, adding. And today we have about 1,300 unique tools that we do offer that we make available. Uh, we have tools that we make available without, without charge that people can just download off my website or they can call me. But um, they can also purchase them. And so that's a service I provide. And we, we do a, a one-time fee for everything. We customize it. We brand it with your logo. You can use it as much as you want. That's not my, that's not my main gig. It just sort of works itself out. I've never, I've never had to fundraise. I've never had to take out family money. Um, I've never had to uh, ask for handouts. It's always completely self-funded. And so, uh, and it's, it's, it's become, uh, it's become a chore, but I've got people, I have employees that, that, that help me out, that take care of it. So I could, I, I, I want to continue to focus on the public and not be the merchandiser, marketer, you know, that kind of, I'm, I'm, I, I'm not a marketing guy per se. It just kind of comes with the territory. It's interesting. You mentioned about some of the changes that have happened in terms of, of course, the research, talking about things like, you know, neck pain, lumbago, and of course, now it's gone towards immunity and going towards digestion. What changes have you noticed within the actual chiropractors themselves? I'm sure you work with, you know, probably thousands of people at this point. Um, there has been in the last six to eight years, just a, a, a crop of young and upcoming chiropractors absolutely devoted and dedicated to this cause like I've never seen in my 35 years. And, and they're still coming out, they're still coming out. And they're, they're doing it right, they're communicating it correctly, they're, they're funding research, they're getting involved at, at, at the uh, local and you know, their, 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 their board levels. I've just seen a group of them, like I said, in the last six, seven, eight years that I've never seen before. I, I used to see like one or two a year, and now they're, they're, they're coming out and they're, they're getting involved even as students. You know? So that's, that's number one. And number two, um, I, I think especially in the States as insurance money is draining away, you're getting docs that are going back to more of a pure form cash practice, um, talking retention. I, I always say this, you gotta talk retention long before you ever see that patient. Uh, if you try to get them in under the, the, the lumbago and then convert them, um, we like to think that happens. It doesn't happen as much as we, as we think. It, it really doesn't. It's, you know, you gotta, you gotta bring them in under the right premise, which is, which is tr traditional historical chiropractic. And so you're talking about the need for lifestyle ADL from day one, not trying to, because we think, we meaning the profession, we think, you know, this person's been suffering with these migraine headaches for 20 years. And I've worked in offices, by the way, I've worked as a, as a staff CA, x-ray guy, you know, communicator. And I saw people with absolute worst conditions that were literally ready to end their life. And inside of three adjustments, like 95% abatement. And you would think that person would, would say, man, tell me what to do. I'll, I'll be here for the rest of my life. They disappear. They disappear faster than just the casual, you know, I'm in kind of discomfort. And I don't know why that is. I've never figured that out. But every chiropractor has that story. So I'm seeing docs that are a little more geared on retention and as opposed to just new patient numbers, volumes numbers, uh, quality care and that kind of thing. And that's good to see. One thing interesting as well is I know you've mentioned before, and I've because I think we've talked about this as well, is about the difference between being checked and being adjusted and the importance of being checked, of course, rather than adjusted. Could you explain that to people, that whole process? Yeah, um, the idea is um, we, we be, because we're subject to certain stresses and forces, forces that our body can adapt to, it takes its toll in the form of vertebral subluxations in the spine and most of which are, are not evidenced by pain. I would kind of think of it as a, like a cavity. You, you get the cavity first, and then the toothache may or may not show up. Most, most of them are, are, are not evidenced by pain. And so you, you need that framework of the body checked on a regular basis. We get our oil checked, we get our teeth checked. Um, 
you you go in to have your teeth checked and there's no there's no problem but the dentist doesn't drill anyway so the idea is the, the consistency being regular the, the retention is that regular care um, if necessary and so when the chiropractor checks you and says you know what you're clear there are no presence of subluxations that's a time that, that's something to celebrate you know the and a lot of chiropractors don't have the guts to do that they think you know what I, I, I've got to do something here no, you're, you're doing the check, you're doing the analysis. And the longer you can hold that, the better you do. And so I, and I advise chiropractors when they're giving, quote, I hate to use the word treatment plans, when they're given plans, to say that from day one. You know what? We need to check you on a regular basis. We'll adjust you if necessary. But our goal is to not adjust you. Our goal is to get you to, to hold through your, your exercises, your stretches, what we do in the adjustment. And, you know, initially we're going to have to check you and adjust you a lot. And you get less and less and less and less as time goes on. Uh, but really, uh, for the rest of your life. And, and checking, lifetime getting checked is an easier sell than lifetime adjustments. And, I, and I'm not sure why that is. But then I, I think because the person has the skin in the game and they say, you know what, if I do the right things, like I can lessen the time here. Um, people get got, got and still do get burned out from three times a week for, for life. They're constantly going to adjust it constantly. And I'm not sure it's good for the spine either. It's just it's that kind of thing. So I emphasize on plans, getting checked, periodically lessening the intervals as, as time goes on. And people can, can grasp that a lot easier. I completely agree. In our practice, again, we're doing scans at every point to see if we do need adjustments. Adjustments are maybe 40 to 50% of the time. But like you said, it's kind of easier for people to understand. It's kind of the model we already have, like you mentioned, for dentistry and everything else. They can see the light at the end of the tunnel. And I, I tell you what, I can't tell you how many people I've talked to over the years uh, who, who've been to a chiropractor. And this is, they, they say the same thing. You know, Keith, I went and it was great. It was, uh, it was beneficial to me. Um, but you know what? The, the guy had me two, three times a week with no end in sight. And I just, it just, the, the time element just burned me out. I just, to a point where I went, you know what? I, I'm out of here. I've heard that th tens of thousands of times. And then we go back and say, if they had put you on a program where you were getting checked monthly, whatever, I'd have done that all day long. I, I, I'd have paid for my life in advance. And, and it's, that, it's that different mindset there. So you're, you're absolutely right. Um, and in fact, the referral aspect of it, it's not, no, you need to go get adjusted. We're like, well, you know what? You really should get checked. You should get checked and at least rule subluxation out. So that's, that's an easier thing because there's, there's, there's no long-term commitment until you know if you have subluxations. So, so the emphasis has to be on getting checked, evaluated, adjusted if necessary. Interesting. So we've talked about some of the changes that you've seen in terms of practitioners. Getting back more to weightlifting then, what kind of changes have you noticed from a, a, essentially a professional aspect of how weightlifters have changed, say, 30 years ago compared to now? Because I know, say, like, Hathor Bjornsson just hit the 501 with his, his deadlift. It seems like things are really improving. Um, on the competitive side of, of lifting, I am not impressed with anything. I, I don't like where it's gone. I don't like it's gone with support equipment. I don't like it's where it's, it's all, the drugs have always been an issue. Um, now they're, they're, they're deadlifting with straps on, which I don't like. So I'm not impressed with the competitive side. No, I was a category one referee for years. I don't even involve myself anymore. I'm, 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 I'm thinking about getting back involved on that side. So, but that's, that's like anything. That's the, the, the competitive, the, the business side of it. Um, I think the best thing for, for weight training that's ever happened has been CrossFit. Um, and even though I disagree with some elements of CrossFit, um, the fact that you're going in there to, to get stronger, to get functional, to get healthier, to get fitter, as opposed to, you know, the beach body or getting the look or training six, six weeks of the year, getting ready to looking for the beach and stuff like that. It's a very functional athletic approach. Those guys are strong and they're athletic. Whereas you've seen a lot of bodybuilder type lifters, not all, but a lot of them, that's all they do is, is just lift, you know, isolation moves and they look fantastic, but functionally it's, they're, they're, they're not as athletic as you'd like to think. And I, when I was on the, on the Navy teams, gosh, I, I, and I was a, I was a middle heavyweight. So I was one of the heavier guys trying to get the guys to go out and just play a casual game of volleyball, just, just for fun. They couldn't do it. They couldn't move. Because they 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 never incorporated athletics. They just they just went in and pounded weights all day. Whereas and and and, and that has transferred over not just in CrossFit gyms where you go in and you see people in gyms actually deadlifting. 
Um, you see them squatting, you see them doing certain moves that they never, they were always doing machines and things like that. So that's, that's, that's the change I've seen. And I, I, for 20 plus years was a garage gym guy, had my own setup and we sold it. We sold the house in Charleston. I sold all my equipment. I just, just couldn't move it. It was too much. And then we have a neighborhood gym down the road from us about two miles. It's a key gym, you know, you have 24 hour access. And the guy there that owns it's a, a local fireman and uh, really got excited about, about that. And then COVID shut him down. So I can't wait for that to open again. But everyone in there is a, a functional, even, even the people that aren't competitive, which most of them are just every day, blue collar, they're in there because they're, they're firefighters, they're EMS workers. They need to be strong and fit for their, their, um, their job. And they look good at, as a result of that, but they're not trying to get in there to get the, the bicep looking all that kind of stuff. Functional, just like functional chiropractic, functional, functional weight training, where you can actually take that strength and do something with it, as opposed to just look showy, you know, wearing a tank top. So as well as the functional side, then what kind of advice would you want to give to say a modern or a current uh, weightlifting uh, champion? What kind of thing would you think would improve their, their results? Master the basics, uh, pick, pick basic exercises, learn to do them correctly for your body type, uh, I'm, I'm five, six, five, seven. Uh, I shouldn't be a person who's six, three shouldn't be learning from me per se. Shouldn't be duplicating my style. Um, and that's what coaching really is, is that the, 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 the principles are the same, but you have to modify the techniques, the foot placement, the hand placement, but don't think you need to do 80 different exercises and always mix it up. Pick the basics, um, the squat, the, 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 the deadlift. Uh, some overhead work, uh, a few of those barbell rows, um, and, and just master them. Learn them from a technique standpoint, and then just continue to add, you know, weight over time. Um, the fundamentals never go out of style, and the fundamentals will will take you as far as you really want to go. So kind of coming back to chiropractic, what kind of changes would you like to see within the profession at this point? I'd like to rid the profession of those who deny historical chiropractic principles, such as subluxation, such, such as an intelligence, where absolutely, which are absolutely indisputable. I, I battled with these guys and I have for 30 years and um, I'd like for them to start their own profession and, uh, or get the H out of ours. That'd be number one. Number two, I'd love to see people, uh, I'd love to see the schools be more dedicated to teaching young docs how to open and run a practice because they don't. They hire practice management companies, which I have a very little opinion of most of them, not all of them. And so they're they're not they're not preparing those guys, gals, to become business owners. Uh, there are no jobs in chiropractic. There's very few. And you know, if you don't like the idea of owning your own business, maybe chiropractic's not for you. Maybe it's not. Um, even if you work as an associate, you still, in a sense, have to build your practice. So I'd love to see the schools become more dedicated to um, that teaching and training. We're, I'm working with a few schools right now, casually, and I say you should start building your practice, at least in, on paper, a year or two before you get out. Know, know the two or three locations, start pre-launch marketing, start getting it going, learn how to communicate, learn how to talk retention. Because I'll tell you what happens, Doc, and you, you've seen this, get a guy in a school that's, that's really dedicated to the principles and there's schools that are out there and uh, they're all excited. They can't wait. They're going to go out and do it right. And then all of a sudden they're like thrown into that. They're, 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 they're broke from the student loans. They don't have a lot of money. And you know, next thing you know, they're, they're billing insurance companies for eight different diagnostics codes because they're trying to keep food on the table. And once you start that, you can't go back from it. And I, I'm not anti-insurance. I'm not anti-condition. I'm not, I, I'm not a hate straight or anything like that. But there is a way to do it. And there's a way not to do it. And they're just not being trained. So they're, they're surviving. And now they're getting into all kinds of multi-levels and all kinds of weird therapies and vibrating this and you know, the latest thing, the latest therapy. <coughs> and they, they can never go back to that. Or it's very difficult. I, I've helped people do it, but it's very, very difficult. I, I, I completely agree with you. I get people coming in trying to sell as a mix of modality equipment trying to sell yeah, MLMs it's like well it's not chiropractic so it shouldn't be in this office if people want to do it yeah. as a business that's completely their choice but it has to be yeah. somewhere and I don't look down on people who do adjunct work I re really don't but boy their 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 bread and butter better be the 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 correction of subluxation uh if it's not they're always going to be looking for the next one the next one the next the next thing because none of these things last 
I, I have followed every crazy trend for 35 years and they never last. Never. Because they're temporary at best. Chiropractic continues to last. And they just never see or they, they look. It's, 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 like the, it's like the guy that falls in love with the young lady and he's just head over heels. And then they, they get married and all of a sudden the two, three years in the marriage, the, the, the romance fades, the fascination fades because they didn't keep it alive. They didn't keep it sparked. And all of a sudden now he just sees a, a housewife or a housekeeper or whatever you know, that they're friendly with. To me in chiropractic, I don't know for me, I got to stay immersed in the green books and the, and the test. I, I got I to keep myself, I got to continue the romance I have with this profession. Because if not, I would have quit a long time ago with the, the crap that I go through. And I've got to read and remind myself of what I do, what I do. I, I have boxes and boxes of testimonials from patients that have sent them to me. I, I'm now to where I have ki- people who, grownups, who, who have who sent me messages or talked to me in person. You did a lecture for my grandmother 30 years ago that she was a, a participant. She brought my mother in. My mother brought me in and now I'm a regular chiropractic patient. And in a couple of years, we're gonna start a family where I get the kids there. And I go, wow, I need to get that stuff out and read it. You know? And uh, you've, you've got to continue to become romantic with the profession, with, with what it is. I, if, 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 I go, if I go a day or two without something, even 15 minutes in a, in a green book or Rob Simmons' work, or there, there's, there's other than the green book, I, I know it, I can feel it. I, I'm, not, I'm not immune from medical outside allopathic thinking. I'm not. Uh, when I do a, a lay lecture, I'm doing it for myself as much as the, as the audience. If I go five or six days, I start, hey, I, people, my audience knows that I'm, I'm, I'm off for, some, for whatever reason. So um, that's just a personal thing that you gotta continue to get. If you can't get excited about correcting subluxations and changing a person's life like that, they're not gonna get excited about it. So the excitement well, begins with you. Well, as I say, as well as changes you wanna see in the profession, what kind of changes would you want to see in healthcare in general, either in the States or in other countries as well? I'll stick to the States just because it's what I know. There's got to be a way to financially incentivize people who take care of themselves. Um, you know, there, there are companies that are self-insured businesses that have done that. You know, if you, if you can pass these physical fitness tests, if you'll stop smoking, if you'll maintain a certain weight, and uh, they actually bonus them. You know, usually it's in the form of credits or time off, and, and it's been wildly successful. And unfortunately, we're, we're, dealing with, um, we're dealing with an industry, and I'm not big on bashing big pharma, but they, they exist for a reason. And I think you have to, however you do it, incentivize health. Um, and maybe to a lesser extent, penalize those who don't practice those good things. I mean, we're, we're paying the price for that right now. Um, I'd also like to, and we're seeing a subtle shift in medicine towards more of a functional type thing, more of a nutritional type thing, more of a, an exercise. And it's, it's, been a, it's been a subtle shift. Um, I don't know that we're ever gonna get the whole world under chiropractic care. I don't know that we need, even need to be trying, but we certainly should be at uh, 20, 25%, 30% regular, regular adjustments. And we don't have that because we haven't had enough people communicate that or do it effectively over time. So. Yeah, I agree. I think it's definitely is lacking. And it's something sometimes we see here as well. You say about a percentage like that. I live in a country with five and a half million people and it's 150 chiropractors total. Yeah. But st- even then, utilization is something that has to change, really, from all of us. And you have to create public demand. I've had this conversation countless times where, think, you know what, we need, we need more philosophy sessions. We need more chiropractic seminars. We need more chiropractors. Like, I, you know, we, we have that. We, we have access to that via the Internet like we've never had before. We've got to create a public demand. And we don't need to do it necessarily nationally, but we need to do it collectively in your community. Go out and create that demand. Um, and, and, and the public will respond. Um, I, I, I think back to, oh, maybe, maybe 10 years ago, avocados were considered fattening, stay away from them. They were the worst food you could eat. Now it's, it's one of the top selling foods, you know, food ingredients in restaurants and they find out they're actually beneficial to them. Well, what happened there? What happened? California avocado advocacy group created demand for that product. They did it very, very effectively. And um, now, I mean, it's been, we have an avocado tree in our yard, so and my kids love them. Um, you, you're shocked at not getting avocado, you know, with a meal in a, in a restaurant. Um, so you can create that awfully, awfully quickly 
if you'll do it smart and if you'll think past getting the, the butts in the seat for your next new patient. What would you advise then? Say for you mentioned about say young docs coming out and they should really be preparing one to two years ahead. I'm sure one of the big things that's changed over you know your career has been the advent of the internet. What advice would you give then to that young doctor about how they could create that demand and that interest in the public? Well, I think first of all, you're saying just on the internet or or in general? In general, in general. Well, I think you have to you have to play the long game like in golf, and not think of every person, every group as that's my next new patient and try to get them in. Um, you go into a lecture and your objective is to get new patients, they'll smell it on you. They, they, could, they could just feel it. And so instead of becoming a, uh, information with a, with a close and, uh, and, a, and a free exam or a cheap an exam, they gotta, they gotta back off a little bit. And it's almost like, um, it's almost like courting a, a, a member of a you know, girl guy, however, you don't, you don't drop to one knee and, and, and propose on the first date or even the first meeting. It's, it's a process over time. And you got to take those steps and, and engage people with, with the information. I think on the internet, um, I know that you, you, I'll use the word building a tribe is kind of cheesy. That's what you want to do. You, you create that following. You do it through content. You do it through information-based uh, marketing and content. And um, you just build that over time. And again, instead of having the pitch, you create such a compelling story. You create such compelling information. People just naturally follow you. They naturally come to you and say, well, well, well how do I do this? And that's, that's really the, the fantastic thing. Then you take those people, you teach them how to refer, why to refer, and equip them with the tools to refer, which is just sharing more content-based information. Uh, information that's found in, 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 in books and textbooks and research. I'll give, I'll give you an example. Um, there's been an incredible amount of research in the last 10 years about how back pain, low back pain, what it does to the brain. It thins it, it, it degenerates it. Uh, chronic, even three months of, of, of not even hurt, just, just sitting back pain will degenerate the brain. It'll contribute to degenerative brain disorders. Some of the top journals in the world have published this. It, it, it's indisputable. You may not even heard. Maybe, maybe you have because you're you're you're, you're a, a research kind of guy. I found very few that even knew that. Isn't that something you'd want to be talking about? Because there shows the need for regular care. We're sitting longer. We have the, the whole textbook type thing. So I find these this is data. They're just fascinating as all get out. What this does. What what crawling every every time I, I talk to a a, 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 a parent which is most people, we have the crawling discussion about how the crawling uh, develops the brain, how it develops the immune system, why when a baby starts to crawl is when their immune system goes to the greatest amount of development. We, and, and, and they, again, it's back to the, they knew pieces of it, they never put it together and go, well, that's fascinating. And then that goes right into the, the chiropractic message of why you want to maintain your, your, your spinal health, spinal health, systemic health. Instead, they're putting out, you know, smoothie recipes and uh, how to select a pillow and all this stuff that's, that's, I mean, it's, it's factual, but it, it, you don't go, wow, wow, you made a smoothie. You mean, you mean a smoothie's healthy, healthier than a Twinkie? I never knew that. And so they're, they're really dumbing down their data when they have fascinating data they should be sharing that people are not aware of. And that's, that's how you get people following that, that fascinating you know, tidbits of information. I think it builds professionalism as well. You know, if a dentist started talking about the difference between Coke and Diet Coke, you think that we know this, it's a bit simple. Why aren't you going for something that's more intellectual, more scientific? Why wouldn't you go a bit deeper into this? Yeah, how, how about the relationship between, because uh, I work with dentists too, kind of on the side, the relationship between oral health and systemic health like your heart. The relationship between, um, you know, um, ha ha having a tooth decay and, and having diabetes, it's there. It's absolutely there. Doesn't mean dentists treat that, but that's like a, 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 a wow, I didn't know that. I love hearing that from people. Wow, I didn't know that. That means I'm sharing actual data with them, not bumper sticker cliches. You know, well, if your if your spine was on your nose, you'd take care of it, wouldn't you? It doesn't mean anything. It really does. It's 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 a bumper sticker. It's a cliche. And most of the content I see in chiropractic is that cheesy promotional. You know, to a chiropractor, they they know what they mean. To the general public, nothing, nothing. Almost like they're they're they they got a chip on their shoulder that the public doesn't understand it. And so they communicate that almost in a negative way, almost in a victim way. You know what I'm talking about? And they shouldn't. I think in some ways it's not giving the public enough credit that they're actually a lot smarter than they may think. 
they will get it a lot better than they will. But what they'll also remember is this person did whatever it was, this cheesy thing, and then it detracts from everything. Bingo. Bingo. They remember the free exam offer. I've got 10 spots available. Uh, the first 10 to call me. Um, people, smart people are repelled by that big time. I think dentists especially are a great, they're a great example of how you can do something very professionally and help people very well at the same time. They have established very well that it's smart to be checked, but you'll never see one of them in a mall giving free scans. It's a, they've managed to get that very good balance. Correct. So I know of course we, for yourself, do, that. Um, we do that because we, because they were never taught in school how to do anything but that. Or the school brought in a practice management company that taught them that's what you got to do. Butts in the seat. Just, just get them in, no matter what. Get them in, no matter what. Convert them later. Yeah, it's the it, problem. It's of like the, the it's, it's like the girl that's dating the guy in high school, and he's a bit of a player. He's, he's, he's not a really good guy, but she's in love with him, and she thinks, you know, he's a bad boy. But you know what? If I marry him, I'll change him. I'll, I'll be able to change him. And that just doesn't happen very much. And it's, it's like the. I'll, I'll, I'll lure you in under one premise, the old bait and switch, and then I'll, I'll educate you and convert you. It can happen. It just doesn't. If not, we, we, we'd be seeing half the, half the world. You know, I mean, I mean, if you really do the numbers and how many people actually went to a chiropractor, it, it's huge. They just didn't stay. Or they, they got out of pain, and then the chiropractor says, I can't believe they left. Well, wait a minute. You advertised treatment of low back pain. They got that. Why would they stay? I mean, if the problem is solved, why would you stay a second longer? So they've created that own vicious cycle. And again, it's, it's very insurance driven, you know, at that point. And it's, it's comfortable. No one's going to argue about low back pain, but you start getting into, you know, nuances of, of kids and, 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 and even mental health and things like that. Not, not as a treatment, but as a, as a byproduct of, of getting adjusted regularly, they have to practice. They have to get good um, at communicating that. And we, we've seen that at least in the States with um, this whole COVID immune system. I, I, I've seen people that just horrible job of trying to communicate that on the internet and in a way where if they just hadn't said a thing, they'd have been better off. They really made themselves you know, look bad uh, by trying to propose chiropractic as a treatment for COVID. Oh, God. And it's, it's been more widespread than I thought. And I've, I've spent the last eight weeks trying to undo a lot of that, that damage, so to speak. You mentioned before about adverts as well. Again, say we have this person, they've just come out of college, maybe you mentioned about adverts. Um, say we have this person, they've got just got out of college and they're trying to formulate some sort of advert. What would you think would be a more ethical and more coherent way of making that advert? How would you structure it? Um, I, would, I would use the internet. I would use the Facebook business page and I wouldn't advertise as much as I would just write content, almost like a blog, but not really a blog on a website. I would write interesting content that's, that's, that's research-based and has one very specific principle. And I wouldn't even necessarily put chiropractic into it. If I can get someone to understand the relationship between spinal health and systemic health, at that point, just the fact that I'm a chiropractor, it's like, it's like they, 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 they fill in the blank. It's not a chiropractic, chiropractic, it's spinal health, systemic health. How does this affect your metabolism? How does a, how does a subluxate, how, how does this all stuff? So I, I, and I would do it consistently. It's like a workout. Being consistent is, is more important than, um, you know, doing a, a couple hard workouts for, for a week or two and then, and then disappearing. And so that's, that's, that's the role that I would go. And I would just be very consistent in, in my posting. Um, if they want to use my materials, which work really well for the young dog, all, all the better. Um, I would be contacting businesses. And again, now is a little different time because businesses, but I would definitely be in contact with HR directors, business leaders, talking about why the services they offer for that particular field, which is, if you think about it, a chiropractor can do three things for a person. They can evaluate, check, they can educate, and then they can correct or treat if we know like that. Okay, that's the three things you can do for a person. What can you do for an organization, a group of people? Same three things. You can evaluate them, you can educate, you can, you can correct. So you, you, you approach businesses, even when you're still in school, with that idea of, of setting it up, setting it up. So one of the things I teach uh, students to do when they're about a year out is let's say they're gonna open up in this particular city and it's probably gonna be that they have some familiarity with. You know, they're, they're, they're 
boyfriend, wife, girlfriends from there, they grew up, whatever, and start making a list of every single person they've ever come across in life. People they went to school with, people they worked with, people they worked out with, and then they're gonna call them when they're maybe, when they have a, a, a location identified, and just say, hey Bill, this is Keith, you know, hey listen, I, I'm opening a practice uh, in the next six to nine months in the town, and I want to know when I get about a month, I don't know if you need a chiropractor, if you have one, but would it be okay when I'm about a month or two out, I call you and just kind of give you the details? Nobody's gonna say no. And so you, you haven't called and said, hey, Bill, would you like to be my first patient? No, but you're calling and asking permission to contact them down the road. And you do that with business owners, business leaders. So by the time you're ready to open, you've got a list of 50, 60 people that can come in under the right premise and begin as patients. And then they just build it, you're just off and running. And so you're, 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 you're doing that connecting long before you, you need to. You're, don't wait until you're thirsty to dig a well, is what I like to say. And, and again, a combination of emails, which email marketing is still very, very effective. Combination of Facebook. I wouldn't put everything I had into Facebook. Uh, there's other social media sites out there. And you're just connecting, sharing content, sharing content. I can't tell you how many people that I've shared contact with, that I've shared the story with, never, ever come in. Never go to a chiropractor, but they'll pass on to somebody else. And that person passes on. I, I know people in, 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 when I was in Charleston that referred north of 30 people never came in themselves. And I don't, I don't get that, but I'll take it. And, and they actually do it the right way. They're sharing content. Share, I, I make all my content very shareable. And to me, that's what referring is all about. It's, it's not, hey, uh, you know, Dr. So-and-so is a great guy. Um, it's, it's here's content. I, I, think you would, I think you'd appreciate reading this. And that's easier. That way they don't have to answer the chiropractic questions. How long does it take? How much does it cost? Blah, blah, blah. But they can share content about, again, back to spinal health, systemic health. And you teach people to do that and they're glad to do it. It's a click of a button. I think it's an important message. I think to be honest, like you said about research, more people should either be active in research, whether it's gathering data or just reading. Because there's such a wealth of information always coming out. Yeah. So for the people, so I know for yourself, it's a bit different. I know in Florida, it's a, not really on a lockdown. To be honest, here in Singapore, we're actually not allowed to go to work. We're not even allowed to speak to our neighbors until June 1st. For the people okay. who are in lockdown, what kind of advice would you give them? Not necessarily even chiropractic, even just general health advice. Well, I think everybody's situation is different. Um, the, the expression I heard a month or two ago was, we're all in the same storm, we're just in different boats. And so I have, I have family that love this. They're, they're working at home, working half days by their own admittance. Um, they're getting stimulus checks. They're not driving anywhere, so they're saving on gas. They got their kids home, so they're not paying a thousand daycare. They, they want this to go on forever. So that person's different than the person who ain't getting a paycheck right now. Their business is suffering. So I think you have to evaluate, you know, where you're at. Um, you know, number one, you got to take care of the health. I mean, this lockdown is not good for us. It's 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 mentally daunting. It's um, it's rough on the immune system. It's it's rough not being outside if you're on total lockdown. We've never had that here. Number one, you, you got you to gotta, you take care of that. You got to be very proactive of that. Um, number two, um, it's a good time to self-evaluate. It's a good time to um, do some things maybe even want to do. Uh, I've, I've still worked throughout this, but you know what? I've cleaned out more drawers, cleaned out more cabinets, cleaned out more garages. And it's, it's good to do that kind of stuff. That's just a little busy work. Um, for a business owner who's struggling, uh, just understand your clients and potential clients and customers are struggling too, it's a great way to connect with them and not connect with them to, um, to get them to come see you or get them to buy from you. I'll give you an example. I'll just use chiropractors as an example. I, I have taught my guys who contact me and say, Keith, I'm, I'm dying here. I'm, I'm open, but I'm, but I'm dropping like, what do you, you or the staff just call them up and just say, Hey, this is Dr. Bill from your chiropractor. Just, just call to check on you. And they're gonna say, we're great, we're fine, they got a story. You're not, you're not calling them to say, you need to get in here and maintain your spine. That'll happen naturally. That'll happen organically. And just 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 make 50 of those calls. Call people you haven't seen in a year or so. Hey, you know what, I was reviewing your file, or Dr. Bill was reviewing your file, and he just wanted to check on you. And what, what the, people will say, you know what, I need to get back in there. Are you guys even open? Yeah, we're open. Um, you know what, I'm fine. Okay, fantastic. And they shift gears, you know how, blah, blah, blah. But we get a lot of people who, you know, I'm fine. I'm great. And then two days later, they call back and say, you know what? I need to get in there. 
or they tell someone else or they tell someone else. And so that, that little, just calling a check on you has been very effective in having a lot of people sustain their practice and even, even keeping it at 99% of capacity. Um, that's, that's the chiropractor. But you know what? If you're, a, if you're a small business owner and you have you know, access to your data, you can do the same thing. Hey, you know, this is Bob. Uh, you guys are, are patches of the rest. Just call and check on you. Are you guys open? Not yet. We're doing, we're doing catering. Uh, hey, this is, this is uh, Keith from uh, Ace Hardware. I know you guys have just called to check on you. I was thinking about it the other day. I, your name went through my mind and I was going to check on you. And they appreciate it. And it'll, it'll lead to some new business if it's going to. And kind of conversely then, say for your say a weightlifter or a powerlifter, what kind of advice would you give them at home if they can't make it into the gym and they're now a bit limited on the exercise they can do? You know, you can, you can exercise with anything anywhere. You know, you're going to be able to you know, have a 700 pound squat rack in your, in your house, but do body weight exercises, do some yoga, do something you haven't done in a while. Um, try a new exercise, body weight exercise. Uh, doing a, what we call a, a, a dumbbell swing is a, is, a, is a highly effective kettlebell if you have them. Most people don't. You can make, you can homemade a, 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 you can make a milk jug and turn it into a kettlebell. And you just maybe do high volume. Um, do range of motion stuff. Uh, I, I think I mentioned the yoga. Yoga is good for the, and it's just kind of, it gives your body a rest because, you know, we're going we're gonna to be open soon. We're going to be open soon. We're going to resume that kind of stuff. You don't want to start, you don't want to, you don't want to take three months to have to get back to where you were, you know, um, do some things that are positive. So that, that would be, that would be my aspect of it. I completely agree with you. As soon as all of this started going on, the first thing I did was before we, we had the dates already set, I went out and I bought myself a kettlebell and I bought myself um, a pull up bar that you, you can know the drill. frame. It's easy enough. It's, it's things people can yeah. do. It is a, a swings is a simple, fantastic exercise. And you know what? You, you do them in volume, do them in sets, do whatever. It's easy to learn. Um, and, and it's a, it's a fantastic whole body exercise. I, I think at this point in my life, I wouldn't have said this 20 years ago, but if I could only pick one exercise resistance, it would, it would be like a kettlebell swing for the rest of my life. I had to pick just one. Absolutely agree. Do you ever look into, I mean, it's complete my own curiosity. Do you ever look into stuff by Pavel Tatsuli, like the little kettlebells and He's an friend. Pardon? He's an old friend of mine. Oh, really? Oh, really? Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he has... Stuff. I haven't talked to him in a long time, but when he used to put out his, um, his newsletter, I did a couple guest articles uh, for him. Um, we had a, we had a common friend that kind of introduced us and um, we've just, I haven't talked to him in a long time, uh, but we were, we were communicating. Of course, he always, he always wanted to call me comrade Keith, which is part of the shtick part. And I, I didn't, I didn't take an offense to that. He goes, I know you're a patriot comrade, you know, just how it is part of the thing. I mean, but I'll you know, for someone who's looking for something different, pick up some of his books, his courses, you can find them. And um, they're, 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 there's, there's fantastic stuff. And I, I, I agree with him on most stuff. I, don't, I can't remember, there was one thing I didn't, I didn't agree with, but I don't remember what it was. It was very small and insignificant, you know. Okay, um, so just before we go today then, getting a little bit more personal, apart from advice from you could, you'd give to others, if you could talk to yourself, say 10 years ago, what kind of advice would you give to yourself? You know, I don't know, because I do that all the time anyway. I'm always given, you know, when I'm writing goals for the next year, essentially a goal is advice to yourself for the upcoming year. And those have largely remained unchanged, you know, my entire life. Um, gosh. My advice to myself is, Keith, you got to say no sometimes. And I'm terrible about that. You know, you've got to say no, you've got to, you can't say yes to everyone. You just can't, you'll, you'll burn yourself out. And that's kind of been the case. And I've got to learn to, I got to learn how to say no properly, you know, um, and I'm not good at that. So I would, I, my advice to myself is keep figure out practice, get some advice from someone on how to say no to people. Uh, no, you don't want to hurt their feelings. I know you want to help them. You can't help everyone. You're, you're, you're hurting yourself. And I, that, that'd be my advice to myself. If it makes you feel any better. The amount of people who I think should do the complete opposite and say yes to much more things. <laughs> it's probably a much bigger change in ratio. So that, it's good advice still to give to yourself. Though. Yeah. Okay. Um, I just want to thank you for joining me again today. Uh, thank you for everybody who's watching this either live or watching on the replay. Uh, I've tagged this post with Keith in. So you have any questions either about, you know, health, 
powerlifting, himself, anything else, please feel free to contact him. I'm sure he'll be happy to help. And if anyone has any questions, of course, you can always contact me on 84389550 or help at vitalitychiropracticcenters.com and I'll make sure that I get back to you as soon as possible. Thank you again for joining us. Thank you. Enjoyed it. Thank you very much. This was live. I didn't know that.